tired of saying this, sorry we're late. But you know, the gremlins will never stop, they just don't stop, no matter how, you know, we try to do the show before time, you know, before the time, it's still, you know, but anyway. Welcome to Abundance of Love, Self-Healing. I'm Marjorie. I'm Alicia. I'm Michelle. And we have a guest speaker with us today, and his name is... Jaden. Jaden. <laughs> I love said him. that very <laughs> dry, <laughs> me. <laughs> well, we have Jaden on the show as our guest speaker tonight. Um, tonight is our last podcast for the next couple of months um lots of surprises today and you know i'm going to be taking the show on the road uh, i'm not going to say where i'm going to be but um you guys are going to have to guess i'm going to be taking the show on the road um in the next couple of weeks so it's going to be different lot lots of different bits and pieces and surprises so um i hope you guys are gonna tune in i'm not gonna leave you guys alone i'm gonna leave you guys for long just a couple of weeks and then um you know i'm gonna get you guys guessing where i am i'm gonna be in different places and i just want you guys to guess so yeah welcome so so hold on if we guess correctly can we come where you are yes, <laughs> yes. yes. wherever is that a I am, is that a if you guess correctly then you can come what i'm involved yeah yeah i'm not i'm not paying for no one's ticket oh uh, well but you you've can come. me <laughs> <laughs> you can come so um yeah so tonight's show um it's about abuse not just domestic abuse but different types of abuse um so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight uh, i'm not sure who's kicking off the show tonight i think we've got michelle that's kicking off tonight i'm, I'm not gonna get, usually i'm keen to start these conversations i i feel it's such a wide topic is very it? wide it's very wide it's so wide um and obviously, I don't want to do it in injustice. Um, but I, I don't know. Like someone else start, and I'm happy to chip in. But it's so broad, I just don't. I wouldn't even know where to begin. All right, well, we're going to get Alicia to start. I'm controlling then. the Facebook as well, as in just looking at the messages. Um, again, we're having connection is bad. So oh, I feel like there possibly is a delay and it, I know it often freezes, but when you do watch it back, it's usually quite smooth. Yeah. Running, but I think the live one, it is, it keeps chopping. It's a chopping. bit choppy. I think I'm going to have to change choppy. providers or something. I don't know. Sorry. Um, because um, I don't know what's going on these days. It just keeps being very bitty. But... Um, we're still carrying on. We're not going to stop. The show must go on, is it? The show must go on. This is it. So, I don't know, Alicia, are you going to kick okay, off? Okay, so I'll kick off then. Um, so, abuse. So, obviously, abuse is such a wide subject. Um, abuse doesn't only have to take place in a relationship between partners. It can take, in take place in the home between a parent. It can take place at the workplace could take place, place even with your friendship groups. Um, quite often in friendship groups, you can be abused and not realise it and feel quite obliged to, I don't know, attend events or attend things when maybe that's not the type of person you are. Yeah. But you feel like, you know, just to please that particular friend, you have to do what they're doing, go where they're going, wear what they say is best to wear or whatever it may be. It is a form of abuse. I feel... Maybe trying to define the word abuse is wide as well because what somebody might feel is abuse, maybe I don't feel is abuse and vice versa. Mm. But I personally think that abuse, to me, is defined by trying to change someone's character, trying to um, take yeah. them out of their true self mm. um, yeah. without a good motive for that. So, for instance, you could be trying to change someone's character, like make them be a more positive and stronger person, 
But if it's taken them out of their character to then not be happy or, you know, even affect their life in a, in a negative way, then to me, that's a form of an abuse. So I don't know what you guys think. Yeah. Um, I think there's abuse in all different areas of life. Um, I think people um, tend to um, mostly stick on the domestic abuse yeah. side of things. But there, it's so vast. There's abuse in majority of areas of life. Um, people get abused at some point in their life. And, um, you don't even recognise it, isn't you it? You don't recognise it. You don't even know that you're being abused. My, it's like what until... you said before, my first instance when I think of abuse, because of obviously what's been shown to me in terms of television and storylines, is the traditional man, woman, woman's the victim. Like, do you get what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. so it, there's certain things as I got older that I didn't deem abusive just because of the examples I was shown time and yeah. time again of yeah. what abuse is. So I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I really hear what you're saying. There's not, it's, in, it's so wide. And the thing is, as you just say, people get abused and don't even know that they're being abused. Mm. Until they're out of that relationship. Until they get out of that relationship. As I said, it could be parents. Mm -hmm. um, children abuse parents as well yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. I don't know if you look, guys know that her children do abuse their parents as well as parents abusing children yeah. and you know as you know as I said you've got the relationship you've got work situations you've got um, managers who abuse their managers, staff because of managers you've got some managers that are passive aggressive, aggressive. Yeah. and if you go imagine going into an office and you've just got someone with such a negative energy that can just yeah. make you not want to work yeah. there. Mm. You may love the job, but you but just you don't just have that cannot get on. You just can't get on with that person. Mm. I mean, some people call it personality clash. You call it personality I've... disorder. Disorder. Oh, no, <laughs> disorder. <laughs> personality disorder. Because yeah. clashing with someone it means there's a resolution, and then you tend to go back to a, a norm. And yeah. most logical but... people can handle having opposing points of view, of view without wanting to harm the other people yeah. like, do you yeah. get what I mean and yeah. some managers as German they want they like to see people sweat or upset. sweat and let them be upset to make them that. feel uncomfortable and if they just don't if you don't fit or if you're not in the clique mm -hmm. then you're in problems listen there could trust be... me I've been there and I've done that twice there's been a there's abuse in churches the same thing with the clean in church as well that. same thing yeah. it happens so in all walks of life it happens but you know today i think we're mostly going to be talking about our you know probably experience or people that we know that it's happened to <clears> or maybe it could have happened to our own selves or you know just give us scenarios um feel free to send messages and let us know if there's anything that you want us to um, discuss or there's, you know, something that's happened to you and you want to share it, um, please feel free to um, text text in. Um, we will have a number, domestic violence um, number at the end. It will be put, put up on the page. And, um, you know, if people need to, you know, reach out to anyone, you know, there's always somebody there at the end of the phone um, because it's serious. And, you know, especially in this pandemic time as well, they'd be saying that, you know, suicide rates have been going up and all that because of abuse. Yeah. Especially, can you imagine people who are in abusive relationships being in the house on a lockdown with somebody with who's someone that's abusing you 24-7 yeah. so yeah, oh, I think that was right at the terrible. beginning of the whole um, lockdown there was one in Edmonton and I think the oh. lady she she was killed by her husband no. because apparently something to do with either he said either she, he said he had uh, contracted COVID and I think she at those times she was quite worried about it so she was like Tim you need to leave the house and he was like no and they got into an argument and he killed her mm -hmm. but clearly that wasn't just because of the covid there must have been a long string of things that stuff was happening going before on, yeah. that so yeah i could imagine how many women and men who were in the home and probably just felt suicidal or felt like you know what this is 
<laughs> this is this a, is just too, too much. much. Yeah. So Jaden, so what's your take on this? What do you what do you what do you want to bring to the table? Depends. What are you asking? You ask about my definition. Or... Any, anything, anything that you feel that you so, want to um, bring to the table. So I mean, in terms of abuse, uh, I always feel that the definition is like very fluid. There isn't really a set definition for abuse, even though there's like dictionary definitions. Yeah. It's not necessarily like exactly. something that can be applied to every situation. Yeah. In my heart, in my words you know abuse there's obviously physical abuse but there's mental abuse as well so like physical abuse in my head's like you know uh, a significant or unjust amount of physical harm or with the intent to to like harm someone unjustly but yeah. of course mental abuse i feel like it revolves around manipulation absolutely so it's like manipulating someone and doing it with the intent to either change them or even something people just do it just because they feel they like it. Like like yeah. like, why not? And um, yeah, again, as you guys have mentioned, it's present in pretty much every facet of life. And someone will experience some form of abuse, if not physical, definitely mental. I mean, you can't escape it. Mm-hmm. It's just how you deal with it. So yeah, yeah I just feel like it is... It's, I feel like it really gets overlooked in some kinds as well because, of course, as you guys mentioned as well, it's because of TV and stuff like that. Everyone thinks of spousal abuse and yeah. just, you know, the straightforward, uh, you know, definition. Whereas I feel like especially <clears throat> mental abuse gets overlooked. Mm-hmm. It's definitely getting better nowadays. We're starting to advocate for mental health and all those things there. That's becoming a lot more prevalent. But... For the longest time, of course, I wasn't alive, but um, just like doing research, like people would usually laugh at like mental health and them things. They're like, what the hell are we talking about? Mental yeah. abuse? What was yeah. that? Just grow thicker skin, which to an extent isn't necessarily a lie, but it mm. it's definitely not a, a, like a, a blanket thing where you can just say, grow thicker skin and you'll never experience mental abuse. That's just not. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's. It's thinking. definitely a subject I think we're going to have many uh, conversations about mm. because we would not be able to do it in one no. episode. But um, if we just, for a little short time, maybe concentrated on relationship then abuse. Yeah. Um, okay. So I sent the guys um, this week something that I saw online and it was describing different types of behaviours of an abusive um, partner. Um, and I don't want to just say male partner because again, women as yeah. well. Some women, women can be very abusive. Can be very abusive. <clears throat> so here are some of the traits, and I don't know if it's anything that anybody out there recognizes. Um, and again, we do this show to make people think, give you topics to discuss and think about, and see where we can help. And I don't know, have they got access to maybe? Sending messages to you privately on the bonus yeah, of love. Yeah, a bonus there's of any love, of us that you want um, to talk to directly? You can, um, send, um, you can speak to me directly. Uh, for those of you that know, I am a qualified counsellor. So, you know, I, and I do counsel people on a, a daily basis. Um, I'm not sure that people are aware of this, but I do do counselling sessions um, with people. And um, so if you need to reach out to me at any point, at any time, day or night, please reach out to me on my page and leave a number and I will get back to you and, you know, we can talk about whatever the problem is. Okay, so this is taken from a book called Living with the Dominator by uh, Pat Craven. And it describes different types of um, abusive people, or some people could have, I suppose, many of these traits. But we've got here the bully. So apparently the bully glares, shouts, smashes things and sulks. So that's what... So so you're saying a person that bullies you, Mm -hmm. those are their traits. These are some of the traits that they may have. They might have just one, they might have all of them. You know, but these mm. are things that possibly to look out for. Um, and hopefully we'll discuss at some point in the show what people could possibly do to, you know, if they they feel that this is something... Because as well, you, you 
interpretation as well is another thing. You might think that a person is shouting, but we know culturally, like yeah, so people just some talk people sound, loud. talk loud and they yeah. sound like they're shouting, but they're not. But they're not shouting. actually. Or some people are really yeah. passionate about something, and it seems like it's a shout, but it's not generally a shout. So. I think when they're saying shout, let's let's go for something like if you heard through the walls your neighbour shouting, Oh, what are you doing? and that kind of thing and you heard the aggression or something in it, then you'd have you'd assume that is proper shouting. Yeah. We're not just talking to like, Hi, oh, come downstairs kind of shout. <laughs> but you know, but you know some people you know sometimes you hear people shouting and people feel I don't want to get involved. Often because we Because you don't know in because society. You don't been, know if the person is being abusive or they're just talking loudly. But even know, that is what you kind of don't want to overstep your mark. I've yeah. got, I have known people in the past who have shared things with me and you'd think, oh, okay, and obviously they're coming to you because you believe they want your mm. advice. And then the very next day they're telling you about the wonderful things they've got planned. So you, you almost don't know what yeah, to I know say. That, yeah, yeah. Do you it's know what I mean? Yeah, like you can't wait it in to say that they give some advice or try to and then and the next minute yeah, you're the just issue. like and then they're yeah. back together again yeah. like, and that's happened yeah. to me yeah. you know many times as yeah. well it's like you like, you try to give advice in what you feel like might be an abusive situation and it's like oh well no back, back but you know what right? I've noticed though a lot of the times in those kind of setups after a while you think you didn't want advice you just wanted to voice like, yeah, they just like, wanted yeah, to. So then, you know, so then I learned to start giving the energy because I'd be giving real energy yeah, to try and have same. a solution and to help. Like, where's my tea? Okay, go on. You say yeah, where's my tea? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you then become the counsellor and yeah. you're just there yeah, to yeah, volunteer. That's what I you know, I, I you know, although I am a trained counsellor, I counsel people every day. Mm. Not even being paid for it or anything, but I counsel people on a daily basis because of whatever is going on within In their, their lives, life or yeah. whatever at that time. Okay, mm. so then and we've got here the jailer. So apparently stops you from working and seeing friends, tells you what to wear, keeps you in the house, su seduces your friends and family. So basically, to your friends and family, that. you're they're they the best. A bit that sounds a bit yeah. Yeah, 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 like a narcissist. Comes, yeah. comes across as all the nice person, and then all of a sudden, yeah. behind closed doors, it's a different. Yeah, person. it's a different mm. story. That's a narcissist. Mm. Okay. I would say. So we've got here, the head worker puts you down, tells you you're too fat, too thin, ugly, stupid, useless, mm -hmm. etc. Now that one could even go to parental abuse because certain yeah. parents talk yeah. to their children like this. Look, yeah. at your, look at your nose broad. And your nose, you've got none, you know, yeah. one of them kind of yeah. things yeah. or yeah. whatever it may be. Um, any... But do you want to cut in or say anything? I don't want to just keep moving on. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, I, you know, I've had, um, you know, back in the day, because I've always been a big girl, and back in the day when I was younger, um, I wouldn't say then I was fat, but I was like, I had breasts and I had bottom and <laughs> all of that kind of thing all going the good on. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, all that stuff going on. And I was told that uh, there were certain clothes that I shouldn't wear. But is that... Because they were like, oh, you just want to draw attention to yourself. And I'm like, oh, I want to dress the way that I feel comfortable in. Mm -hmm. I, you know, but they were like, oh, no, you're drawing attention to yourself. You shouldn't dress in a certain way. As a young lady, mm -hmm. you shouldn't dress in a certain way. And I mean... I took it literally and I started wearing like shirts and stuff right up to my neck up here mm. for many, many years. And Did I, you, I, look, I as an adult, do you feel that was that that was abusive? I felt like it back. made me it was a type of abuse mm. because you know, it because I felt that they were looking down on me. Mm. And because I wanted to be free in wearing what I wanted to... Expressing yourself. Yeah, I wanted to express myself and I felt that I wasn't able to. So this is why I get scared because obviously when I have children, as a parent, you don't, you're not always on the same page as your children. Yeah. My main thing is anything I tell you is for your greater good, I ain't doing it for my health. That's right. So i.e. if my 14-year-old comes downstairs ready for the school dance and she's got... But pull um, shorts um, on and her rider. out. I think I'm well within my rights as her guardian and yeah, I'm gonna yes, say, of 
Oh, you're not this is what I'm trying to say. I don't know where the line is. Do you get what I was going to say, I don't know how old you were at the time. At the, the time, I was like about 15, 16. But back in my days, we never had nothing like Batty Rider. <laughs> but also, if I have the poor fish sharks, the issue is the way. Nothing like that. It's the way in which it's said to the person. So if you say, "Come on," that doesn't it doesn't make you look nice. You look, you know. If you then say, "Look at you. You look nasty. You look like a trap." You look. Do you get what I'm saying? The yeah. it, the, the depending on the same message is there, said, but the hat is the delivery. Yeah. The, the bit that makes it the abusive, delivery, not that's abusive. The, yes, and I feel like it needs to be someone. explained as well. What? If you're telling someone, I don't feel that you should wear this, yeah. why? Don't just say, oh no, that's, I don't look good. It's like, okay. And mm-hmm. you should no, be no, fair. No, fair in it, you can't, you couldn't like say, because this is aunts and uncles and, mm. you know, not just your, because, you know, back in the day, it was a village that grew you. It yeah. wasn't just your parent. You had even though they weren't your real aunts and uncles. I don't uncle. necessarily say back in the um, day, that still applies to today Well, as well. no, not really. I don't think, not as much as it was back in my day. Um, everyone, you could not call anybody by their name. Yeah, it was it a sign of respect, anyway. isn't it? They had to be auntie, they had to be they uncle. To yeah, no. no I've don't... heard lots of small children calling adults by their name. Mm-hmm. That's choice, yeah. And the parents don't and say nothing, the and they don't right. say nothing. But you know, back in my days, you know, it wasn't as I said, it wasn't just my mum because I grew up with my mum. Um, it, it was aunts and uncles that would say, you know, I might have had something like what I'm wearing now, mm. and they thought that your brace is out of door. But but you've also mentioned obviously you're an adult now and you were a minor then. Mm. And then we have to add it. It doesn't make it right or wrong, but cultural ways of like, like do you get what I mean? There's so yeah, many but things, it, it, but it, I guess it still doesn't stop how yeah, you felt. Yeah, how and it, it made, made me feel, feel like I couldn't wear anything for years. You know, it affected me for years because I thought, oh, people are going to think less of me mm-hmm. if I. But that was their opinion. Mm-hmm. But for me, it was something that followed me. Mm-hmm. And I felt it was a type of intimidation mm-hmm. at the time. And um, I would call it, now that I look at it, a form of abuse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because you, I was stigmatised mm. for that, which made me feel very uncomfortable and very unworthy. And that's the thing, it's the repercussion of what the yeah. words or the action is doing to that person. Mm. How are they made to feel? That's um, right. Like the same delivery could have been given in a much loving way, just come on, cover yourself up and, you know, you're, you're a beautiful queen, woman, yeah. you know, that sort yeah, of thing. But, but, you know, they didn't know. I suppose they didn't really know better. Mm-hmm. And they just thought, oh, you know, you know, back in the days, you know, they used to use the word Lego beast. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh it was Lego beast. I know maybe some of you <laughs> well, know that name out there. They definitely knew but that. But Lego beast. Yeah. And, um, like, you know, because you would wear something like this. Mm. Okay. Where it's totally acceptable now. <laughs> To wear something like this, there's nothing wrong with that and having my arms out here. But is that a sign of the times then? But I think it's with the times. Mm. And age as well. And age and all that. But I was, I felt victimised. Okay. At the time. Have you ever spoken to them about it? Never. Never. You couldn't speak to your parents. No, I didn't think at the time. But you know, as you got older and you reflected upon it, because obviously it's something that I'd imagine Mm. stays with you. Never, never. He never revisited never. that conversation with any of them. Never. Why? Because I just felt that at the time I had to do what they said. Mm. You know, I, you know, as far as I was concerned, they were adults and they knew better. Uh, yeah, no, and I understood so, why you didn't say it as a child, but as you got older and you became more reflective on. I still never. I still didn't take it on. It's just something that I just always felt. So you don't know why you didn't question it then? No. As an adult? No. Never. Okay, we just had a message. Um, someone said, 
Um, yeah, Elisha, I remember that one. Apparently, there was domestic violence going on from the start, and I think that was in relation to the, the incident. Story. And, and yeah, yeah. 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 All right, shall I move on with my list? Yes, go yeah. ahead. Okay, so then we've got the persuader threatens to hurt or kill you <clears throat> or uh -huh. the children, cries, says he or she loves you, threatens to kill themselves, threatens to report you to social services. Mm -mm. Or DSS, whatever it is. Wow. The That's love getting bombing. sounding real narcissistic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they sound. Yeah. Okay, we've got the liar. Oh, bad. Denies any abuse, says it was only a slap, blames drink, drugs, stress, overwork, you, your un you or unemployment or anything else. We've got the bad father or mother, says you are a bad mother or father. Turns the child against you, it uses access to harass you, threatens to take the children away, persuades you to have their baby, or you want them to have you want to have a child to keep them, and then refuses to help you care for them. Oh wow! And we've got also. And I'm kind of adapting this slightly because this was in relation to men, but I think it's really important to put it as well out for... Men and women. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so we've got here, king of the castle, but we're going to say queen as well of the castle. Treats you as a servant slave. Says women or men are for sex. Cooking and housework. Expects sex on demand. Controls all the money. And oh, the wow. last one here is the sexual controller. Now this is really deep. rapes you won't mm -hmm. accept no for an answer keeps you pregnant or rejects your advances so i suppose that more i, I don't want to be ignorant and say that um women can't rape men because it has happened but obviously this is in relation to a man clearly but i know so, that that's happened i know someone personally mm -hmm. that that's happened to a man and um no a woman oh. mm -hmm. And just kept getting her pregnant all the time. Really? She had 12 children. Just to control. So she didn't go anywhere. And she couldn't go anywhere. The last child that she had, she begged them to sterilise her without letting, him, let, yeah. let, letting her partner know. Mm. And they sterilised her. They gave her a caesarean, although she didn't need a C-section. Mm. They gave it to her because she begged them to say, I cannot do this anymore mm. so and yeah so, so i know it happens it happens you might think oh it sounds far-fetched but it's not it does happen Steve. do you think abusers and i think i might have been asking you about this earlier but do you think abusers are like previous abuse like victims like what like where do these people just derive from like where possibly. possibly and this is i think where it does need to be talked about a lot more because it's sometimes it's generational so if yeah. you've had a child who's abused and then becomes an abuser then they abuse their family it just keeps mm -hmm. going the cycle Sorry, keeps going stops. so if it's spoke about more and these things are highlighted as to what is abusive, people will start to really understand. Because again, and like we're saying, we're not trying to say that every single thing here, if one little thing in there is in a relationship that you're being abused, it's not that. But you kind of got to wake up a bit and start to realise if there are certain things that are not making you happy or not bringing you peace in a relationship. And again, it's not just about um sexual or um relationships it can also be about friends family and whoever else workplace then you need to start to evaluate that situation and see yeah. why then or what can be done hopefully you'd think just by speaking to the person that should be enough really yeah. truly True. and if it's not then obviously the problems are a lot more deeper rooted and you're gonna have to really get some support and advice so somebody saying good evening um, barbara says good evening good evening um hey bob she says it can be a learnt it can be learnt as a I suppose as a child seeing their parents treatments treatment with another with one another that's very true so when a child is seeing maybe the parents shouting at each other they think it's normal it's normal to shout at normal their behavior partner or friend or whoever else yeah they're abusing normal behavior 
Um, yeah, because children learn off of what they see. Mm. And mm. if they see that, they're growing up around that, they think it's quite normal. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And so that's where the cycle comes in. And so, you know, it it can evolve and it just goes around and around and around. Mm. But nowadays, because everything is more open, because back in the days, or, you know, even now, it's a taboo subject. Mm. If someone's been abused or they've been, whether it's man or woman or child, mm. is being hit, you know, burnt, um, whatever type of abuse is going on, sexual, non-sexual abuse, a lot of time, right, it's hidden because of, it's embarrassing. Mm. And fear, they are as well scared of if it gets out that they've told somebody or said anything. Of course. The repercussions. repercussions. Of course. Yeah. I, I worked in the NHS for many years and I worked um, in um, paediatric liaison, which is, um, you know, you're the ones that see the children that come into A&E, which may have a problem. And there were so many children there's lots of children that's abuse. come in and have been abused. Abuse. But basically, when you speak to them, it's like, they're like, no. They're like, there's nothing going on. There's nothing. Because they feel that it's normal. My friend used to do social work, and she broke my heart one time when she was saying there was this little boy that was being, like, physically abused at home and obviously had to be removed from the home as a result. Yeah. But that little boy was crying his eyes out because all he wanted mm. was mummy. Can you imagine, like, he's so used mm. to this repetition of... Yeah, uh, children, of, children are crying, very just loyal. Wants to go back to the person yeah. who is causing him such pain. And I just, yeah. I'm a bit broke, but I didn't have no words for it. Yeah. Children <laughs> are very, very loyal. They're very loyal to their parents yeah, or their guardians. Guardians, so they're very loyal. They are, and, but I'd say, I mean, in this situation, it's more Stockholm syndrome. So I mean, that's applicable to children and adults. Yeah. If you're abused for a certain period yeah. of time yes. and you grow, you grow an attachment to that person. So regardless of whether it's a child, you just don't want to get in trouble. Stockholm syndrome, because obviously not everybody might understand. Uh, that. So essentially, um, Stockholm syndrome will be suffering abuse throughout a constant period of time and then once you've experienced that sometimes people then grow attached to the abuser for various different reasons mm -hmm. um and then we you know you could find situations like that was described whereas even though you're being abused they're still crying or logging out for the person that was abusing them because it's the norm you know they don't it's not know really the only cycle yeah you know, so mm. it's definitely a thing. Yeah. Very interesting. So yeah, that were all. They were all my mm. um, examples from that book. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it. It is. Um, it. I feel that it's still a taboo subject. Mm -hmm. I feel that there is a lot more. I mean. There's people now that are coming forward, but there's still a lot of people that's not coming forward. There's also, as I said, abuse in so many different areas. Gay people get abused as well mm -hmm. by their partners. Also by people that are anti-gay. I was going to say that, even family right? members. And also they have partners that abuse them as well mm -hmm. so we're not leaving out the gay community because we know that it goes on and they don't speak out about it you know sometimes they do speak out about it you know they get ridiculed i've heard of people before you know um whether they've tried to change their gender and especially family members who don't, are not appreciative yeah. of it or don't want to support 
and they'll still be calling them by their old gender. That's yeah. a form of abuse because yeah. you're it is. injecting that person. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, family can actually be some of the worst perpetrators yeah. of abuse. Yeah. Yeah. Not like just people outside, people inside internally can be the Quite worst often, perpetrators. they say the abuser starts at home. Yes. That's what they say. You're probably more likely to be abused at home than you are to go out on the street outside. and randomly get abused. Somebody said, um, children live what they learn here. And yeah, yeah, that's very true. It's true. Definitely. That's what I was saying. That's what they used to. And they, they, they live it. That's their life. They don't know anything else. And so they live it and they think it's normal. Mm. It's not until they get out of it and they see other people, they think, oh, well, they don't do and that. And it's quite often Whatever. when they've left it and they look back and it's like, oh. Actually, yeah, it's um, after they've left it, but you know, while in it, they don't, they don't class that as being abused, they don't yeah. class as being abused, yeah, that's just say, normal life, exactly. And then, obviously, that brings up another topic that we were discussing earlier is where do you draw the line between you know, what can be classified as abuse compared to discipline? You know, where is the, the outlier? For that, what, where do you draw the line, if you will, between, okay, I've disciplined my child and, okay, this is getting abusive. What's yeah, that? yeah. I know a lot of people won't admit it to that they um, slap their children or, you know, smack their children or whatever. Mm. I, I will admit that I did slap mm. my children. Um, but I felt that I'd done it for a very good reason. And I, I, I knew that I had a line. There was a line that you couldn't go over. But some people don't know the line. Mm, mm. And they take it further. I mean, you know, it's not um, always acceptable um, to hit your children. I mean, this is something that was generational for me. Mm. I grew up with... My parents slapping me down, beating <laughs> me with belt, wire, stick, all different things. Yeah, mm. I got it. Can I ask, sorry Which to cut you, like... what was your behaviour like as a child? I'm not saying, I'm not justifying what happened. I'm just trying to, because if you were telling me you're a child who just sits there and you just more or less content no, and get on and you're getting not. that kind no, of treatment no then no no that no you obviously me. did something mm -hmm. you did something at school you know you got detention mm -hmm. you know you bumped but, off school mm -hmm. you wasn't you, you were supposed to be in school you weren't in school um you tell a lie you um you know they asked you to do something over and over and you didn't do it mm -hmm. And so they will say, okay, you're not listening? Okay, listen to this. Those who don't hear mm. will feel, yeah. Yeah, and if you mm. don't hear, you're going to feel. Yeah, and so mm -hmm. that's how I grew up like that. So obviously when I had my children, I felt that that was the way. Mm. But then, you know, as time went on, I realised that, no, you can't just get up and just keep beating your kids for everything. Because it doesn't solve anything, mm -hmm. you know? It doesn't. But at first, I I did. I used to beat them all the time. If they didn't listen, i just beat them. Mm. And I'm guilty of it. And I'm not going to try and pretend. And I mean, I, you know, maybe my kids might, you know, they might hate me. I don't know <laughs> if they hate me for it. But I, I don't um, feel that I... Um, I went overboard. Now their father never ever hit them. <laughs> and so that made me look like the monster. Mm. So it cost I uh, suppose was it a case then did you feel like you were the disciplinarian? Yeah. The yeah. I felt like I was the one to discipline okay. um the children. Um because um their dad felt no, I I don't want to do that. And what was, do you know what his upbringing was his like? His upbringing he was he used to be tied down onto a bed and he was abused. Okay. So, like really so as a result, abused. he really wanted he, to do the opposite. He has marks on his bodies until now hmm. that from he was a child. Yeah. So hmm. he always had the stance that 
I would never, ever hit my children. Never. Because he was abused. <laughs> because he was totally abused. Mm. And so he didn't hit his children. But that made him like, you know, some, you know, like when you when you got your kids and you say, wait until your dad gets home, he's going to deal with you. <laughs> if I said that to my kids, they'd be laughing like, <laughs> what, when dad gets home? <laughs> do nothing <laughs> that's what happened but if you said wait until mum comes home they'd be like oh, oh, we're sorry we're sorry we're really sorry we won't do it again don't tell mum don't tell her well yeah I feel like that's not necessarily a bad thing you know using that as a form of deterrent is definitely the best solution you know it's the best of both worlds you don't get beaten and the child <laughs> doesn't act up but of course to implement that there does have to be a level of disciplining the child but again i feel just feel like where do you draw the line what is where do you deem it appropriate to discipline your child in that manner and where not like for example you gave an example of a detention i don't personally agree that if someone gets detention that they should be it depends uh, what the detention is no, for, what attention is for. if i find out that you swore at a teacher or you punch the child in their face, you're going to punch the child in their face and we're not doing nothing about yeah. this. No, but then I'm sure that what they would get would be more severe than a detention, probably an expulsion or something, rather than a detention. I don't think you're going to get away with uh, punching the child. In their yeah, face. but if you got if a child got um, excluded from school or something, it's like, oh yeah, I've got to spend some time at home. Well, that's What's that teaching them? Well, that's where the discipline comes in. But I'm saying, I was, I was giving the example of detention, not expulsion. No. no, but I'm saying, you know, even if a child, if you, you know, child got excluded or whatever, because they did something, what's the repercussion for that? Okay, I was going to say that. So, all right, well, let's use the detention as an mm -hmm. example. Your child's been um, disruptive. Dis disruptive in mm -hmm. class, the teacher's basically said I've had enough, they're getting a detention, but the next time it's gonna be expulsion. Expulsion. Is that the word? Yeah. 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 So they get sent they they come home, they tell you what's happened. What's the plan of action in your eyes? In my eyes the plan of action is to A find because I mean if they're acting out, what type of acting out is, is going on, what what is the rationale behind this? I would expect my child to be able to, you know, voice these opinions and and uh, you know, speak in a relatively coherent manner mm -hmm. if they're unable to you know we'll have to wait and see but in my eyes i feel like there's other ways to deal with that i mean like you said there's other means of discipline you know taking away their phones and stuff like that mm -hmm. but also just making making sure that you know they're not having tons of fun at home you know there's going to be reading going on you're going to be doing all these types of things because for me i feel like Worse than getting beaten sometimes was like having my stuff taken away. It was like, okay, so you beat me, but now I get to go and play Game Boy. But, <laughs> but, but if, I, if I get, you know, if, um, if I get my Game Boy taken away, okay, so now I'm not beaten, but now I'm bored and I've got nothing to do. And boredom is some of the worst feelings that I feel like anyone can really uh, experience outside of like, like serious abuse and stuff. But yeah. like, I feel like doing those types of stuff. And seeing how your child reacts to it, because not every mm -hmm. child reacts in the same say. way. Yeah. Some children are just happy to sit in silence and just be like, oh, I'm cool. Right. So then and you know that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that's... I know that I used to take um, stuff away from my children, and I say, right, okay, you guys are going to be prisoners, and they'd be prisoners. Mm -hmm. they, I said, this is what it's like to be in prison. I mean, now it's different, but <laughs> back then, right, to be a prisoner. You can't go outside. Mm. You don't have no privileges. Mm. You have, you eat your dinner. Once you eat your dinner, you go back in your room. Yeah. Get yourself ready. If you've got your home, do your homework. Right? And I will set you homework too. Mm -hmm. If you say Not you ain't playing. got none, <laughs> I will set some for you too. Yes, education. To do some. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Education. Educate yourself because... True, you're trying to be rude. You're trying to be able to order. This is what you have to do. Right, and I did that, right. And so, you know, one of my sons, he, um, when I told him one night he couldn't go out and um, 
he went out. He climbed through the windows and he went out. <laughs> right. So in that scenario, uh, would you then? Would you, what would you then think is good discipline? Because clearly the talking ain't good. Yeah, so I feel like it's an escalation matter. So mm-hmm. if you've tried certain methods, I feel like beating or like corporate punishment should be like the upper echelon where it's like, okay, I've tried everything else. Now I need to show you something. <laughs> so when we, in, in that the case, word beaten, it's just, it has such an impact on it lands. Because <laughs> did I get smacked when I was growing up? Yeah. Did I, did I use the word beaten? No. Yeah. I mean, um, if a child is about, you know, I've told them to move away from something for their own safety mm-hmm. and the child mm-hmm. keeps going back and they're coherent to understand don't go mm-hmm. there, I'm going to smack your hands and make you realise. Yeah. I want that pain to be associated with why you don't go over there. Mm-hmm. Have I beaten my child? Have I smacked my child? Is there a yeah, line? There is there difference. Yeah, there's definitely so there's a difference. There's beat yeah, and, and smack. Yeah. And slump. You can get smacked on your hands, that's not necessarily beaten. Or smacked you get... on your legs and stuff like that. That's, yes. I feel that that's okay. Yeah, but then, I do. Yeah, but the then they get beaten with a belt. Because if going into danger, going into mm-hmm. the road or going to somewhere, yeah. you've got to... Just to shock them almost. Shock, give them yeah. a little shock to let them know, no, this is so dangerous. Yeah, that's not getting beaten. You cannot right. do it. But what about getting beaten with a belt, getting beaten with a wooden spoon? And all them things there. Yeah, that's yeah, getting beaten. Yeah, that's because that's because I've hit my children with the belt. So is that right not beaten? I mean, I'm not. My children are big old grey people. Now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I'm saying back in the day, I felt that I had to use those kind of measures. Mm. I have. I've got all boys, and me as a little woman there <laughs> after a while they flexed me like this <laughs> when i would use my hand and sort of go don't don't they'd be like this <laughs> like, and my hand would be hurting and it'd be stinging and it'd be red and hurting and they would flex me so what do you do then <laughs> i'm still confused between like what do you do? Like, no, no, that, that's, that, you know what? Everyone does the best they can okay. with the knowledge they got. Do you understand? Like, well, we can do yeah, the Yeah, but that's best. why I went, like, for a wooden spoon. I thought, well, maybe that's going to hurt them more than my hand because my hand ain't doing nothing. I had an auntie that was telling me to go and get the said spoon. Almost like, I get a choice. Am I going to use the spatula? Or am I going to use the Lucky me. Yeah. And then prepare myself and go and my eye. And just close your eyes. Yeah, and then you just wait. And just wait. And I just be, come on, man. You don't have to... Syllables. Just get it out. Just get it out. Start in. But I don't know. I'm still struggling with abuse versus discipline does that make sense like when mm-hmm. yeah. when do i fall into the danger zone of potentially being yeah, an abusive, abusive mother mm-hmm. as opposed to a disciplinarian yeah you get what I mean? yeah and, and yeah. given and it's, our a thin, background, and it's a thin line it yeah is. it's a thin line it's a very thin line because you could go over it and not even know that you go over it because you're so angry you've done so much and you just don't know how to get through to this child and you just like sometimes you could just like Go that little bit extra, so, and that's why they, I suppose, yes. they say it's best just not to. And so it's it best so not to. You don't go over that line. You know, and in that's why I think it's like it's majority of the time. I was like, you lot are grounded. You're grounded in this country. You can't are, go nowhere. Your children are not nothing. really your children it's, because now they're no. getting smart. I remember when I learned the line, "Oh, cool child." Like you know the way they you oh, oh, say it to like my one then I'll give them the number. I'm going to beat on a today. I'll call. Chai line. I'll call them for you. Don't worry. Don't worry. So <laughs> over here, I said, me. back in the day, we had yellow pages. I'm going yellow pages. I said, this is it. See the number here. Mm. But make sure when I call them, you're not coming back here. <laughs> you <laughs> laugh, but is that not sort of a form of mental abuse? Yeah, it is. I was you know the child is not going to give it. Yes, I'm serious. I've got to bring it to the table. Bro. Yeah, I mean, you know the child's not really going to call child services. Yeah, you're giving them that. You're still in. They're saying it. They're saying it. Well, yeah, they're but they're saying it. They're saying it. Oh, I'm going to go to social services. You can't do this to me. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Fine. Days. Yeah, all right. This is the number. Chai line. See, Chai? Mm hmm. But we're going to be you. But see, Tia. Jason. 
I'm gonna beat you. There was a guy, you cannot make this up, so don't, children can be manipulative, who took in his daughter, he had a child, he was an African guy, the woman, I think, was a Turkish lady, but obviously culturally couldn't have this child with me. She wasn't, wasn't, it just wasn't going to work for her life. So he raised the child. Um, he was therefore the main parent, the, the main um, guardian, and would see her mother on weekends. Traditionally, we associate like the children going to their dads on the weekends yeah. and with their mum. It was reversed. Yeah. She'd obviously have a fun time with mum. Mum became like a friend, isn't it? So when she didn't get what she wanted, and it was a, you know, he, he I think he was Nigerian. His mum helped to raise as well. So they've got, you know, yeah. structure in place. When she got to an age, this beautiful young girl who realises she's now pretty and she wants to stay out after school and all of these things, she started acting out. So things were put in place to try and, you know, help her fix up. You know what the pity did? You can't make this up. And this is a true story. She went back to her mum told her mum that her dad had been abusing her. Yeah. That he would warm up the slipper on the stove <laughs> and start... No, but no, you stay there. Police oh. got involved. Wow. Big investigations to find out this little girl was just lying. Lying. But you see how yeah. you've got to be careful because people will shout mm -hmm. abuse. And so she was just, you know, you think 14 years old, they would never call child lying. When they mm. want what they want, mm -hmm. their children will go to any of these kids. They're getting so manipulative these oh, days. Oh, my. Like, or, or else, if, if I don't, if you know, if, if I don't get this or whatever, I'm going to behave like this, I'm not going to come back home. Mm -hmm. All these kind of things. And depending on what the parent dynamic is, mm -hmm. if a parent is already struggling and they're just, mm -hmm. they're even like, at the end of their terror, so to mm -hmm. say, they're gonna just give in to that child and then it becomes that child's abusing them. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely, definitely, I would say, harder if you're like a single parent because yeah. if there's two of you, it's harder to manage the dynamic. But if there's just yeah. one, it's it just depends like, because then you can get two people too who are not very dynamic and disciplined, and then that child just takes the mick with both of them. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Often on this this shows. they've got to be on the same page. Yeah. When parents are dealing with children. You can't have one saying one thing, the other one saying another. Then they you know, manipulate each parent. Sometimes you've got one parent that is like, "Don't worry, it's okay." Mm. So, and then the other one saying, "No, what you've done is really wrong. You shouldn't." The other one's like, "Oh, it wasn't that bad, really." That's conflicting. Yeah. Yeah. Why we and then, rush into and, then and then the pet and then the child now is going to start playing the parents. Mm, mm. But you know what? I, I hear what you're saying. Don't rush into have children, but you still have people being together for a long, long time think they're ready and because they haven't dealt with their own traumas mm. they still reach them points because you don't know what child you're going to have you could have an absolutely lovely child or you could have a or a a monster could be a challenge <laughs> <I'm> a monster that's <laughs> true <laughs> I feel so like it's, it's a lot easier when you're both on the same wavelength. So, I yes. mean, when it's like a matter of this child going to one parent and getting one answer and going to another yeah, parent and a different yeah. answer, that would be different. I mean, if you're, if you're both on the same wavelength, that shouldn't be happening. No, but it, it does happen. It couldn't happen, do you know what it, I mean? It shouldn't you know, happen, it but it does happen. Yeah, it does. But then that means you're not on the same wavelength, then? No, no, it's not all the time that parents are on the same wavelength. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. But this is why it's important that you're saying that when you're going to meet, you're meeting someone, you're going to have a child with them, you need to know what their stance and this is. Goes on, well, no, that's easier. So remember what we were talking on, on, about a few weeks ago, yeah, what we were talking about when about we meet somebody, these and are the questions. The what's your type of discipline? How mm -hmm. do you discipline, how would you discipline a child in this situation? Because if you're hearing that person, oh, I'm going to beat down that child, da, 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 and that's not your exactly. way, that's not yeah. it, then it's a, it's, a, it's a flag for you. You've got to think, well, you can't have a child with that person, really, because they way of thinking is it's totally completely different, different to yours, mm -hmm. but it's just you know these aren't the types of questions that are asked mm -hmm. because yeah, you know you there's no questions that, that are being asked at all but no but i mean it's, it's definitely more difficult for a lot of younger people because they're thinking you know, i don't care about none of that but i feel like these are the types of questions that we should be asking yeah, to yeah. avoid having a lot of about in families more often, mm -hmm. even at the family gatherings, talk about these subjects because mm -hmm. a lot of these, I suppose in maybe your generation, ours definitely, these are things that you don't even bring up to um, parents or aunties no. and uncles because it's like, that's to, that's big people's talk. You don't mm -hmm. need to worry about that. Yeah. You don't yeah. need to worry about that. But, um, we're getting the timer, but another thing I wanted to, because we slightly touched upon it about when you see abuse happening and you don't actually want to say anything because you... Why you don't want to get involved. get involved. You're scared. But sometimes even on the street, you see people literally like a, in a, a relationship just 
look literally taken. I think it was it one time we was driving and we saw this woman and she looked like she was slapping up the man in the car. In the car yeah. And we were both kind of stunned, like, do we do something? Do we not? But mm. there is a fear. Yeah. One as well, because sometimes often uh, people who are abused go to the police. And they're just told, well, it's domestics, you can't get involved, mm-hmm. and, and, and that kind of attitude. So people lose faith of even telling anyone because they just feel like I'm trapped here. Or you Especially try and call the police looking in, and then they undermine you by saying, no, everything's yeah. fine. Everything's yeah, no, fine. Yeah, no, so yeah, it's definitely yeah. more of a dynamic. Like, for the example you gave for a woman hitting a man, the man going to call the police, the police are going to what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, yeah, that okay. attitude is ridiculous. Exactly, yeah. but it's ridiculous, though, yeah. because... Some women do really beat up man, you know. Oh, I know. Look at that man from Love Island. They when they were they were properly on her case about because she had apparently hit the guy, or well, the one that committed suicide. And what's that? Um, flat. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Like, yeah. But people were so on her, like you know. Yeah, because she beat him. She beat and him. Allegedly. Up allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah. It's true, but. Where do you draw the line? That's the question we're asking. Where do you draw the line? When do you feel it's too much or... Are we even realising there are so many people that are in situations and have got no idea because it doesn't look like what we're, we're usually presented as what abuse looks like. Yeah. They just think, oh no, that, I'm not like that, so no, it's not that. It's not me. That's and not me. And they'll give all the yeah. advice to the person outside of the relationship who is being abused, but you think, but you're going through the same thing. So, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. Because the abusers don't feel that they are abusing. I was going to ask the abusers. <laughs> abusers like, don't feel that like they're abusers. abusing. Like, I think some of them do, because like, there's no way you could be like, Beating up your wife or no, beating up your No, but some of them just feel that you deserve it and I'm not. You know, you may do I'm this, just like, like, yeah. You yeah. don't want to, yeah, but you're like, acting up. <laughs> yeah, you're acting up. There's always a reason. I think I probably said this all the time. There's always a reason for everything in life. So there's a reason why they're an abuser, clearly. Whether it's been they've learned it, whether they don't know how to control their anger, there's always going to be a reason. So that whole statement of, oh, you made me do it, but why did it take? whatever it was to tick in your head that made you think that's okay to then go and abuse that person yeah. so they're the ones who now need help and understanding why do I tick them like yeah, that I think like you know sometimes you know you have some children I'm talking about being a parent or whatever some children have behaviour problems mm-hmm. yeah but it's not been diagnosed mm-hmm. that there is something actually going on yeah. with this child so you as a parent now is thinking, why why is my child mm. act, always acting up? Why are they mm. always doing something wrong? Why are they always... And, you know, you try everything and it doesn't work. Mm. Some parents don't want to even admit that their child has a problem. Mm. Yeah? Because you feel like... I don't want to say it because maybe I might have failed or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, so they don't get that child tested. Sometimes the school even says, we'd like to um, run some tests on your child. No, I don't. I was a school secretary for 15 years. I know about these things. I'm not just talking air. And you might say, look, your child, you know, is very disruptive in class. You know that your child's disruptive at home, but you don't want to admit it, yeah? But you just feel like beating your child, beating your child, beating your child, the child's supposed to hear, the child's supposed to hear. The child might have a problem. Mm-hmm. And those, uh, those sometimes are the parents that go over, over the line, because they feel that they're trying so hard and I'm doing so, when, they're not looking at the bigger picture, mm. but there may be something wrong. But they don't want to see that. You said the child's rude. Mm. Well, the child not listening. Why? I know you can't really anyone that associates a, a child's behavioural issues with something as a failure. It's probably a bit dumb. No, some people do. Some people do 
<laughs> well, I'm not saying that they don't, but I'm saying that's a dumb mentality because, you know, a lot of these things children are born Some with. Some people do. I'm not and saying they don't, I'm then, just saying it's dumb. That's me commenting on it. It's yeah, dumb, dumb but it's, it's just, it's a, it's unfortunate that they don't, they're not aware and... Oh, they maybe not educated, educated enough. enough about it to realise it. I mean, a lack of education is being done. But, I mean, in this instance... No, a lack of education not being done. Some people have um, learning disabilities. It doesn't mean to say that they're dumb. No, someone with learning disabilities doesn't mean that yeah, they're... Yeah, but it doesn't mean to say they're dumb. And it doesn't that. Say that people with learning disabilities have children. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with a lack of education. You can have learning disabilities and still be intelligent. No, no, no. Yes, Sometimes, can. right, there is a... Pro- oh, look, we're giving a time out. We're getting a time <laughs> out, time out. <laughs> Wow, I think we're going to have to come back yeah. to this. Definitely coming back. In we need to come back to this. Um, guys, we've been given a time out, like about time out, time out, time out. Done, 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 done. So I can't believe we've been speaking for an hour. That's That's easily like done with us, lot. We haven't even touched, yeah, like we haven't yeah. even touched everything that we really want to talk no. about, to be quite honest. But um thank you guys for joining in this is the last um show for the season um we will be coming back um bigger and better we're gonna be um i think we're coming back on a bus actually we're not sure we've got lots to think about we've got lots to think about we might be coming back on a bus we might be doing shows in different areas that we're not even sure yet we've got so Let's keep that things. under wraps. Let's just surprise. So you. we're gonna surprise you guys. You just don't know. With abundance of love, self healing, every time is something different. So yeah, and also I'm going on the road as well. So uh, hey, <laughs> hey, going on the road. So and I, as I said, wanted you guys to guess where I am. So thank you guys so much for joining us, being a part of Abundance of Love podcast. It's a table talk. Thank you so much for joining in and being with us. And um, we'll be coming back in, I think it might be April. April, we'll be back with the next um table talk so tune in and just want to say thank you love you guys thank Thank you so much if anybody feels they need to get in contact please dm abundance of love page and hopefully we can answer okay see you guys take care